So, I'm laying down, I'm watching a movie, my phone's on silent, I'm chilling. The movie's really good, by the way. Um, it's about two hours long, I'm halfway into it, I'm at the 57 minute mark, so when I go back and finish, I'm gonna finish the movie. But anyway, um, I feel my, my watch vibrate, so I look at it, and it said, Instagram message from Eli. My guy Eli, he hit me up, and he said, you're probably making a video on it as I'm typing this, but Ravens just signed former, and I'm like, oh, I, it's, it's probably... Something about, maybe he just saw the news about the Saints, the former Saints safety, Marcus Williams. So then I open Instagram, and it says, former Jets right tackle, Morgan Moses. Like, what? What? The late night, EDC. EDC, go to sleep, man. You go watch a movie. As a matter of fact, no, no, you don't. You keep working. You keep working. Keep it up. It seems like a lot of the names that some Ravens fans have kept pitching and kept talking about is coming together. And see, we, had, of course, Marcus Williams was signed earlier today. And there were so many people like, oh, that's just defense, man. And I can understand the frustration now. Trust me, I do. But I said, I told people, just wait. Just wait. We got a long way to go, but just wait. Let's let everything play out. And I love this. I love this because they signed a tackle, a tackle, and that's been the issue with the Ravens was at tackle. We talked about how this season, sorry, I'm hyped. This, this one got me more hyped than the Marcus Williams one because we've been talking about all offseason long. They need to go at it as if Ronnie Stanley is a bonus, as if Jawan James is a bonus. They need to go at it like those two guys, getting those two guys back is luxury. Because you just, you, you can't count on them. You hope that they're back, of course, especially Ronnie Stanley. If Ronnie Stanley comes back and he's fully healthy, oh boy, oh boy. But you have to go into this season like he may not be back. So I love this move. And, and the deal, when you look at the deal, it's, it's a three-year, $15 million, so five mil per? <laughs> So we five mil per man, five mil per. <sighs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. We talked about in the Marcus Williams video that that could not be it, and it would not be it, and it better not be it. And it wasn't it. So there, there we go. It wasn't it. It wasn't it. Eric DeCosta said in his presser. He said it was on him. He said, it's on me. The whole the offensive line, that's on me. And it was. Because he's the one that established the roster. He's the ones that he's the one that builds the roster. Um, and the cause the way that the whole Orlando Brown Jr. situation went down, and I still I still don't understand why people feel like like the Ravens absolutely had to trade Orlando Brown. I just I never agreed with that at all. They never had to trade Orlando Brown Jr. That was a position where they had all the leverage in the world. Yes, he did publicly come out and say, I want to trade. I'm a left tackle. He did come out and say that. But he still had a couple years left on his rookie deal. And with, well, no, he still had a year left on his rookie deal. So we knew that they weren't going to sign him. And yet they did get a first round pick back for him or whatever. But we knew they weren't going to re-sign him. But still, if he wouldn't, if he would have been like, all right, you know what? I'm not playing. I'm not going to play. If he would have sat out, then it, Ravens would have been like, okay, you don't play. We will still have the rights to you when you do decide to finally come back. If you decide to sit out this year, which we know nobody really ever does. But if he would have threatened to sit out the year, they could have been like, okay, cool. Do your thing. But that it just they just had so much leverage. But anyway, we, we going too deep into the Orlando Brown Jr. story. With that, I say all that to say this. That that situation post-Orlando Brown Jr., was not handled with quality. They handled it with quantity. With, oh yeah, we got a guy to replace him, but it wasn't a quality guy. It wasn't a quality player. And maybe if Ravens would have been more healthy, um, then it would have been a lot more running, possibly. Um, but anyway, it wasn't quality. So this right here, my favorite thing about this, and Jeff Zrebik said it, my favorite thing about this move, because you signed last year you signed a Jawan James. 
Last year, not even last year, but Ronnie Stanley's been around for the longest. But every single year, Ronnie Stanley has missed time. My favorite thing, one of my favorite things about this signing, because there's so many things that I love about it. But one of my favorite things about this signing, Moses has been a very consistent and durable player. Let's run that back. That was so nice, I got to read it twice. Moses has been a very consistent and durable player. Durable. I'm sold already. I'm sold already. But anyway, Mo well, Alejandro was durable as well. But anyway, Moses hasn't missed a game since his rookie season in 2014. He's 31. So he is a little up there in age. Just look, but hey. Just because you hit 30, it don't mean that stuff stopped working. But anyway, uh, he played last season with the Jets after seven seasons in Washington. I remember, I remember always hearing about him in Washington. Um, but that that's big right there. To have durability at the tackle position. But not only durability, but quality. Quality durability. And the two, if you can get those two hand in hand, you can get those two with each other. That's a beautiful thing. That is such a beautiful thing. Um, I love it. This is amazing. I am very appreciative of it. Now, just imagine this. If the Ravens, and it's, it's still possible to go down. If the Ravens can go into the draft, knowing who they're attacked. Like, you, you got to assume that Morgan Moses... He's slated for right tackle because you, of course, want to hope that you get Ronnie Stanley back, but you still got to have somebody ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Well, stay as ready as you possibly can so you ain't got to get ready. But you got to expect that he would be a right tackle. Now, imagine if there was a scenario where you could go into the draft. You got a safety. Okay. You got a tackle, right tackle. Well, you got one of your tackles. Okay. But imagine if they go into the draft with a safety, tackle, and a center. Imagine if they go into the draft with that. Especially a center. Well, I mean, especially a tackle, too. Because you can go into the draft with the pot. And actually, right now, well, at, not at center yet. But most of your offensive line, again, Ronnie Stanley, you got to treat it like a bonus. But at the same time, like, Ravens paying him all that money. So is it really a bonus if he comes back? It's a bonus if he stays healthy the whole year. But you could possibly have your entire offensive line set. And the offensive line was the biggest question really over the past couple of years. But certainly this offseason, it was how are you going to build this offensive line? What are you going to do at this offensive line? You could possibly have that set going into the draft. Into the draft. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Now, it doesn't stop here for the offensive line. Even besides center. Besides center. They need to get another tackle. Another one. Because, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Last year, you, you had all your starters. But we know how that went. Now, another reason I say they, gotta, they still got to get another tackle. Ronnie Stanley, yeah. Jawan James, Morgan Moses, yeah, okay. Patrick McCary. You want as much quality as possible because you never know what could go down as we saw last year. Just like that. Or really for the Ravens, it was like that and like that and like that and like that and like that. It was nonstop. So they still need more. But they are at a very good pace right now that I personally love. Love, love, love. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> so far, so good. You know, the first day, everybody was tripping out like, man, these Ravens are not doing anything. This is better. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, please keep it up. So, I'm sure, no, we don't mind this at all. Um, and yeah, that's that. That's that. Ravens with the late night signings. So I wonder what's going to happen next. Um, oh, the Saints, they got Marcus May. Okay, they had to replace their guy. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, what's going to happen next, man? Um, mm. 
I don't know. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, I'm just very glad, man. Very, very glad because let's let's really again let's go in, let's go all in, all in. Push all the chips to the table. Push it all forward, man. Let's go all in. Let's not just be just. Let's not just be winners. Let's not just be a good team. Ravens don't need to just be a good. They they they've been a good team. We we over them being a good team. They need to do what it takes to be great.